Hello, welcome back to part. I don't even know what part we're on. Uh, might be on like five. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but with this, picking up where I left off, I was talking about Daniel. Daniel was praying and consecrating in fast and he dealt with the prince of persia who was withstanding gabriel who was trying to give him back the message from the lord after he had prayed a lot of us have been the person like daniel that was praying for our spouse wondering why we hadn't received the answer but there was a fight in the spirit realm, remember how we started this? We were talking about there has been a spiritual fight. This is where the storms came from against the manifestation of the promises coming to pass. So we've stood in the gap in prayer, being the warrior, being the one taking care of everything and everybody. And the spouses have been going through the physical uh, elements when he was down there on the, the the telephone trying to get in touch with his father um the girl was the lookout i think her name was kate she was the lookout so she was making sure that he was good down there but the water was coming up so fast she was wondering if he was drowning over there because the water came up so fast that you couldn't even see the archway no more um where she had watched him on the phone and the water just filled up that fast and she was like calling him like sam sam and for some of us we've seen silence we haven't seen no movement whatsoever we knew that they had called on the father we knew that our spouses had called on god we knew that but Things were looking tumultuous. Things were looking like they were flooding out over there. Things were looking like all kinds of hell had broke loose and we ain't seeing them nowhere. So we looking around like spouse, spouse. Oh my God, God, what's going on with our spouse? Oh my God. But he ended up coming up from under the water. Now, catch this. When he comes out of the water, they had to go to a place to find some dry clothes. Okay. So when he went to change, he was freezing because remember that water wasn't just regular lukewarm water. Remember it was a rainstorm. And because of the way that the rainstorm has been, it was a cold, bitter cold rain heading towards turning into ice storm, okay? So that water was degrees colder than just like average day cold water rain. So he was like, I'm freezing, oh my God. Some of your spouses have one, had their hearts in a cold place. And because of it, we have been in prayer to warm their hearts. We know the scripture about the hardening of the heart and turning the heart back into flesh. But our prayers had to get through. Think about the arteries and the way that the heart works. If you have a hardened heart and or any issue with the heart, that there must be a level of... Um, it's like plaque bacteria that builds up around the outer wall of the heart in order to like it causes a level of prevention from certain things over time can cause issues that can lead to certain things. And for some of the spouses over time certain things had created a hardened exterior we know what that's called right 
P-R-I-D-E, around the heart. But God had to soften that. We, in prayer, were softening that. Because as we prayed for power, as we prayed the love of God back into their hearts, God injected his strength within them, refreshing them. But what she did was she noticed that he was so cold that she took her body in the warmth of it, what it was at the time. And this is something that was unknown at the time, but was going to come up later. She, when she cut her leg, she ended up becoming infected. And as you know, with any infection, it causes your body to what? Heat up at a more rapid degree. And the Lord's showing me something right now about when a pregnant woman gets pregnant. She actually, during the first trimester, her temperature changes. Some of us have been carrying things spiritually, whether it was we were carrying things for our spouse spiritually, whether we were carrying things business-wise, whatever it was we were carrying in our spiritual pregnancy that warmed us up. It warmed us to a level and degree that was a higher temperature than normal. Follow me. And because of that, when he needed warmth, she took her body and pulled her shirt up to a degree so that the warmth of her body was directly against his. Tell me the scripture, you know, you know it. Ecclesiastes. For when one falls, he can lift the other one up. But if one is cold, the other one can what? Warm them. They can warm each other up. She said to him, you're so cold that I have to stop and make sure that your body does not heat up because of the fact that the body will sense coldness in it. And because of what it does in order to protect the heart, it will cause all of the blood to rush to the heart to a level and capacity too fast that could literally have caused him to go into some type of heart failure. Okay. The Lord kept showing me in relation to the spouse that some of them needed a heart transplant. Their hearts needed to be dealt with. A lot of them were dealing with heart issues in relation to that P-R-I-D-E and vanity. So he had to deal with the heart. You see what I'm saying? So with the dealing with of the heart, you stood in the gap to make sure that as God was starting to prune and pull and do all this stuff to them, in the, as their heart was being made flesh, that as it was being thawed out, by the rate of the blood of Jesus going back into the heart in order for it to operate in the strength, the joy, the loving kindness, and tender mercies of the Lord. Giving them back their power and the refreshing necessary. It didn't happen too fast. You think it was a delay? No. 
you had to warm them up in the spirit realm. But you had to warm them in such a way that it allotted them the ability to smoothly shift. To smoothly transition into that. It was a level of smoothness that shifted. You understand what I'm saying? And with that smooth transition, it allotted for the ability for the transformation to occur so that these men didn't go into shock. That with all of these things that were happening to them and around them, they didn't go into shock. Their bodies didn't go into shock. And some of them dealt with much turmoil and they had to go through day season, Psalms 55, the whole chapter. But you spiritually covering them prevented them from going into shock, which could have called us their hearts to fail them. What does it say in the word? Man's hearts fails them. You see how that works? So, uh, what else was there? In order for them to be able to gain the wisdom and the understanding, in order to be able... To walk into the new. Taking responsibility. Emotionally healing. So that they wouldn't go into shock. And going through this level of deliverance. They had to come to certain wisdoms, knowledges, and understandings at a pace that they weren't used to. Okay? So, meanwhile, she ended up going back upstairs and they had to tend to what was going on elsewhere. Now, meanwhile, he goes and he tells the two other guys that um, his father said that the storm is bad. Nobody should go outside, so on and so forth. It was going to get worse, blah, 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 blah. Now, she tells him, you have to speak. When I tell you the shaking that came through my body when she said that, because not but a few hours earlier before that video or that movie came on, I saw a video by Sunray Speak saying, you must speak. The only reason I'm doing this review, I wasn't going to do it. When I tell you the warfare that came after me before I did this review, mentally, emotionally, spirit, oh, it was ridiculous. What came after me before I started this review, I felt all kinds of ways in my mind. Because there was a specific attack. Hear me when I'm telling you. There has been an, a, a very specific attack coming in relation to offense. That has been teamed up with the spirit of projection. That has been teamed up with the spirit of accusation, anxiety, shame, uh, condemnation. All of these things. These are all emotional feelings that your spouse has been dealing with. And it's been so intense. It was enough that it would potentially crush you. We walk with God. It come against us. We still feel like, oh my God. So you can imagine your spouse having gone through this, not as spiritually aware, but can hear God and everything in his life going straight up. <laughs> Every table has been flipped over, everything. And it's like, oh my God. So you can imagine, we fully spiritually aware of what in the world's going on. 
and we still dealing with the weight of it. So you can only imagine what they were dealing with. And then God saying, speak. For some of your spouses, there was a level of urgency for these men to do a very specific instruction that the father gave them. And every time they did not do it, something happened to them. Because it was something specific I was recognizing a very particular attack that came against my spouse. And I was like, and God was telling me that it was happening. I'm like, because he would let it repeat three times. And I'm like, oh, this must be witchcraft then if you're telling me that this is happening. So I would go into prayer and all that kind of stuff in relation to it. And I would see that it had calmed down and what was supposed to be taken care of would was taken care of but I was like God why is this particular attack keep hitting him is it disobedience or is what's this what's what's the rub here so they had to go through a level of healing so that they could be able to receive what was necessary through their own forgiveness internal forgiveness of people and the women and the things that had happened in their past and all of this kinds of stuff in order to be able to receive the healing that was being brought to them but they were it was hard for them to be able to receive because they were dealing with a major level of offense within themselves and they were feeling offended by the people around them. They were feeling offended by the situation. They were feeling offended by everything. And then with the, the warfare coming against their bodies, they would. Blessed be to Jesus, they had common sense enough not to cuss God. <laughs> but I know that they were frustrated and angry having to deal with it and having to deal with it. And some of them, yeah, the Lord was saying, what I need you to do is speak forth the truth so that all of this can stop if you do what you need to get done it's it it's certain parts of their obedience that they it's like god give you an instruction you ever get an instruction and god give you like five pieces of instruction and you do four of them and it's like there's that one part god said i need you to do that one thing i'm gonna still mess mess you up if you don't do that one thing like but i did everything i need you to do that one thing i still need you to speak i still need you to do this i still need i'm so sorry that you <laughs> are upset about what have you but i'm gonna need you to be obedient because i still need you to speak there are certain things that these men have known for a long period of time. Yup, they were dealing with delays and all of this kind of stuff. But what I'm getting from it is the fact that there are certain things that would have been resolved a long time ago. Hey, when God first told them and pulled their coattails, I need you to go do this. I need you to go deal with this. And in some of some of the cases, I'm going to be 100% real with you. Some of them counterfeits that they got involved with, that whole hellish experience that they dealt with would have never happened had they been obedient when God yanked their tail chain the first time and said, I know you see her over there, but I'm going to tell you go over there to her. But she don't look appealing to me. I know she looks gorgeous. Go over to the plain one over there. But she looked too hot to try. I'm going to go over to that one. Go over to the one that looks plain Jane. But she looks good. <laughs> Go over there. <laughs> they didn't listen. Because there are certain things <laughs> that they were supposed to get that would have been resolved. <laughs> From the jump street when God said, that's the one I need you to go over to. They may not have understood what. Go over there. <laughs> but they didn't listen. 
And then they had to go through all of the confusion, all of the warfare, all the hellish experience, all of it. Disobedience. And for some cases, some of y'all went through levels of certain turmoil, torment, and certain things that happened because God had to put you and store you away while he dealt with them and they disobedience. It's like, I'm going to still give them to you, but I'm going to need to sit with them for a minute. And you were like, but God, why do I got to sit over here? Why do I got to be in this uncomfortable place? I know you're uncomfortable, but I'm going to need you to sit there because I'm going to still deal with them. They're going to turn their heart, but I literally got confirmation from one of my leaders. He's like, and the leader literally said in one of his broadcasts, God's working on it. And he even winced a little bit when he said, yeah, he working on it. <laughs> he working on it. <laughs> I was like, okay. So, yeah. And he said that two years ago. <laughs> two, two and a half years ago. Coming up. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, some of this stuff could have been avoided due to, due to their disobedience. So, coming back to where I was, but the young man, he was, he was obedient. He jumped up, he said what he was supposed to say, and everybody, 90% of the people left. I was reminded of the scripture in, um... Joshua when Joshua was to bring the children of Israel into the promised land remember that uh, they were wandering around in the wilderness for all that time because they had to wait for all of the other people to die off in some cases Lord allow that 90%. Remember, I need you to even remember the scripture that uh, talked about Gideon and the armies and the fact that they started out with what? 30,000 or 300,000 people. And each time God cut them down and he, it's got to be less than that. Cut them down. It's got to be less than that. Cut them down. It's got to be less than that. God had his perfect reason why it, he allotted all the only the, the people that were allotted to go into the promised land to go in the promised land he knew Gideon in his case he knew it was going to end up being it ended up coming down to 300 people all those people took off running and left out of there the second that they found out that uh I think it was an arctic snow or something snow snow store was coming and they were like but the path had been clear. It was a clear path to leave. So they were like, bet we leave it. So all of the majority of the people took off and left, leaving only a handful of people to remain in the building. I think if I calculated correctly, it was about 12 people behind when all was said and done. Because it was a homeless man with a dog. It was the four of them. It was two of the library, two of the librarians, a man and a woman. Uh, so what is that? Seven. And who else? But you can consider the dog to be eight. And then um i think it was a couple other stragglers because i saw a red-headed woman young girl that was number eight eight nine and it was somebody else that was in there with them so sometimes the lord will allow it to get down to the amount because remember 
the young man's father was coming to get him, right? What would have happened if it was 90 people in that building? It would have been a madhouse if that father came in there and said, I'm coming to get my son. They would have trampled that man to death trying to get out of there. He's like, you got help? Where we going? We coming with you. And they try to leave there with that boy. With... Please. God allow these people. Go right on ahead and leave. If y'all want to go right on ahead and leave. Leave. It's less of you. It is. The less I have to take with me. See how that works? So with that being said, and, and this is another factor coming into agreement with that. There are people in your life that are going to have to leave before you go into the promised land. Whether it's that they have to leave or God needs to spiritually separate you from one another. You may still be in their presence, but y'all are going to be spiritually separated from each other mentally and emotionally to a to a degree because it has to be to that degree because when he decides that he's going to suddenly shift you y'all can't be all hugged up and attached to each other and in some of these cases what happened is the people came to the realization oh hold up you leaving even if you didn't recognize that they knew that you would leave in they knew every been in a situation where you're preparing to go somewhere preparing to do something or preparing to any capacity to do what god told you to do and all of a sudden the people around you that you know you are your enemies start talking about what it is like passively aggressively in relation to what it is god's preparing to bless you with and you're like wait a minute how'd you how you know about that i ain't never tell you that and it's not that they were directly saying, oh, you preparing to get married or, oh, you preparing to this. It's like they just start saying negative stuff about it. Or you start seeing news reports that are negative about it. Let me even, I'm going to dig in right here. A lot of us have been sitting there waiting on marriages. Don't I find it coincidental <laughs> that now one of the most popular <laughs> TikTok series is who the world did I marry? Which brings about a whole tremendous story that can implant thoughts in your mind. If God's telling you, I need you to get married quickly, to start to doubt, God, maybe I don't know them that well. Maybe I don't this. Maybe I shouldn't. Battlefield in the mind. God's sitting there talking to you about pregnancy. Now you're starting to see all this type of stuff talking about women and age and this and stuff that come, things that can happen in relation to pregnancies and issues and problems. And like, what? <laughs> you praying for very specific people in order for them to get saved, healed, sanctified, and transformation of God. And now all of a sudden you get in spiritual warfare against talking directly about the thing that you're praying about. Be careful of the people. This is why God had to separate you from people because then people were subconsciously, subtly operating under the wrong heart posture. And it's funny. I was listening to a video yesterday and the person was talking about the fact that they mentioned an old cartoon, Tom and Jerry. Remember how Tom and Jerry used to always beat each other up? But you ever notice how children are? Probably learned it from a lot of those cartoons. That instead of being loving, caring, and hugging, they will torment each other. Especially those of you that either have siblings, had siblings, or have children that is more than one child and they are siblings and this is what they do to each other. They will torment, beat, cause confusion, not because they hate each other and particularly, it's pretty much because they love each other but don't know how to express it properly. Tom and Jerry would beat each other up the, throughout all of the cartoons. 
And what this person was mentioning was the fact that what happens when you separate yourself? The 90 that left or the 90% of the people that were in that library that left thinking they were going to safety ended up dying out there. Just like the people of Israel who went out into the wilderness and had to stay out there till they what? Died off. Leaving the small group. God had to show you who the people you had surrounding you were. Same for your spouse. Oh, I get it now. All those people were around the man. All those people were around the man. He was trying to get the people to stay. Some of your spouses have been trying to get relationships, friendships, and association to be a to continue to remain around them. He, they were trying to prevent them from leaving, trying to hold on to those relationships, and God was cutting them off. If you didn't see my word, I did a word, I don't even remember what the name of it was, where I talked about uh, what happens when you have an injury where you had to have something amputated, okay? Some of these men were in relationships that by these relations being cut off, it was like they were having parts of themselves amputated. In cutting off something to a level of ampu it being amputated, you have to properly clean it, cover it, and um, what you call it, tie it off. That if it's not properly tied off and given the proper level of medication, penicillin, whatever it is, antibiotic to prevent infection, it could end up becoming septic and killing the person through blood poisoning. Cutting these people. Some of y'all been angry because it's been taking so long. Some of these men was, was taking too long to cut off these relationships they had in their life. And I'm not talking about just the soul ties with counterfeits. I'm talking about friendships, family members, situations and such circumstances. Because some of the worst. <laughs> woo And you know what I'm talking about. Some of the worst relationships. Blood is thicker than water. I don't know how. <laughs> Some of them had family members that they were supposed to been head cut off. And God was saying, I can't really certain things to you until you cut them off. But cutting those individuals off was like amputating a limb for them. And some of your spouses had a people-pleasing spirit. And because they had a people-pleasing spirit, they wanted to hold on to all those people. So when all those folks went running out the door to get away from them, your spouse went through a, an emotional trauma 